crafting in Path of Exile has always been only for the richest 1% of the player base. That is probably why you haven't even bothered trying it, right? Well, what if I tell you? In Harvest League, this is a thing of the past. All you need is buy a few crafting bases, grab your favorite item ethics website, and start auto-planting tier 1 seeds. Yep, tier 1. All the great crafts you actually need for making the most overpowered items you can get in the game are tier 1 seeds and some game knowledge. Of course, there's some fancy stuff like map missions and Uber, Uber Lab and winged scarabs and other stuff locked behind the higher tier seeds. But for this video, we don't need that. Because if you want to make a character with an explosion chest piece, tailwind boots and some other crazy strong items, just listen to me for a few minutes and I will explain to you how to get started with seed crafting in Harvest League. First of all, you need to know which craft types are available in Harvest. The modifier types you can change in Harvest are attack modifiers, caster modifiers. Then all the damage types, which is physical, chaos, lightning, fire and cold. And there's also crafts for defense and for life modifiers. You can look up which types of modifiers can roll on your items based on which item type it is, so helmet or boots or gloves, which type of base it is, so an int base, a strength base or a hybrid base, and of course which of the types I just mentioned above, so attack, caster, physical, chaos and so on, are actually aligned with which modifier. So for example a chaos resistance modifier is a chaos mod. A life modifier is a life mod, an energy shield modifier is a defense mod and so on. That way you will know which harvest craft will affect which modifiers. For some mods it's very straightforward as I just mentioned, but sometimes it isn't. So looking them up really makes sure that you don't make any mistakes and ruin your items in the process. Then you will need to know in which ways you can change these modifiers. And for that we will mostly focus on three types of changes. There is remove a certain type of modifier, for example remove a physical modifier from an item. That can allow you to get rid of an annoying modifier of the physical type that you do not want on your item. There is augment a certain type of modifier, which adds a modifier of that type. So for example augment a fire modifier can add a fire resist. Then there's a combined remove and add of the same type craft, such as remove a life mod and then in the same step add back on a new life mod. This is great for re-rolling a modifier to get to higher tiers, so if you have like a plus 5 life roll, you can remove that and add another life roll back on, hoping for a higher tier life roll. But be careful, there's also remove a non-life modifier and add a life mod. This is less specific as it can remove any mod and add the life mod back on, which can often ruin an item, especially if you use it accidentally and confuse it with a craft mentioned before. And then there are the Chaos Spam Seed crafts, which you can use to make a good baseline item, which you can then use to improve and remove and augment crafts until you get the item you want. Since this was all very theoretical, let's go over a helmet craft that I plan to make for my character. I bought a helmet item level 80. Five. Sometimes a certain item level is needed to craft certain modifiers on an item, which already has the helmet enchant I need. It also has Warlord influence as you can see, which means it can roll specific additional modifiers that I want for my character. What I then did is I used the Chaos Spam Seeds to get a decent life roll and two good resistance modifiers. As you can see the item also has an armor roll and a thorns roll that I do not want. Since the armor roll is the only defense modifier on the item, I can remove it with remove defense. The same is true for the thorns mod. I will then augment a fire modifier twice. If you look into the affix list for warlord helmets, there are only three fire rolls that can roll on this specific item. Since it already has fire resistance, it can only roll physical damage taken as fire damage, which I want for defenses, and nearby enemies have minus nine to fire resist which I want for damage. Once that is done, because each item can only have three prefixes and three suffixes, this leaves me with one open prefix. I can now add a life modifier to the item, which will guarantee a hybrid armor plus life modifier, on top of the pure life modifier that I already have. This is because the suffixes are already full. That way I cannot roll the flat life regen roll, which I do not want. To finish the item I can now keep spamming the remove life modifier and add back on another life modifier until both of the life rolls are of a high tier. And lastly I plan to use a tier 2 seed as well, which allows me to recraft the fire resistance into a cold resistance. Because I personally on this character do not need fire resistance because chieftains get so much of it for free. I hope this helps you get started with your own seed crafting projects. It will take some time to get into and get used to the affix system of PoE, but believe me, especially this league, but also for the future, it will be very much worth it. I will link you the PoEDB website with all the data mined affix data below this video. Subscribe for more Path of Exile content. I'm Yoji and I will see you soon.